Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at Four on this Tuesday. I'm finally getting the days down now after <laughs> being messed up for a couple of weeks. I know, it takes a while, doesn't it? But it is Tuesday. It is Tuesday. We have a busy Travel show. Tuesday. Yeah, it is Travel too. Tuesday. It's spring break. We'll get, tell you some hot destinations for spring break. It's right around the corner. It is right around the corner. Time's flying. All right, here's what's, making, <laughs> here's what's making news on this Tuesday. A City of Madison Task Force says the way city government is set up, some people are being left out of the democracy. A new bill at the state capitol could mean that patients would need to give consent before a medical student performs a pelvic exam while a woman is unconscious. We'll talk about that. Plus, the defense secretary says the U.S. is not seeking a war with Iran, but is prepared to finish one. Let's take a look outside today. It was cloudy most of the day and a little bit cool. Oh, that is a great shot. <laughs> Finding the ice. And we have a oh, taste wow. of winter chill coming up. We could see some more ice out on the lakes. Dave Caulfield's in the backyard. We're not used to cold weather around here. No, 20 straight days of above normal temperatures in Madison, dating back basically to the start of winter. Uh, but we are seeing a few flurries and snow showers make their way closer to Madison right now as that cold front is right on our doorstep. Not expecting any impacts here, but maybe a tenth to two tenths of an inch of snow could fall in some isolated spots. Right now we are seeing the clouds move into Madison on the WIC TV Skycam. Temperatures are down to 34 in Madison, 36 in Janesville, but you can see where that front is, where those temperatures are in the 20s. That's where that cold air is crashing uh, into us, to borrow a phrase from Dave Matthews. Wind speeds are out of the west behind that front. They're starting to pick up as well, so it will be a bit breezy tonight into the overnight hours, and that will actually drive our wind chills down below zero in many spots to start off Wednesday morning. Temperatures will be falling fast through the 30s and 20s this evening. A few flurries can't be ruled out, but again, not expecting uh, them to really impact your day all that much. So here is your first alert traffic update right now. Taking a look at East Washington at Dayton Street. Not looking too bad at the present time. Any travel plans that you have tonight, even with the threat of a little bit of light snow, I really don't think should be impacted that much. Across Dane County, no major accidents or incidents to report traffic. Generally heading out at the posted speed, starting to see a few delays pop up on the eastbound Beltline past Park. Park Street, your drive times this afternoon, not looking too bad. Eastbound Verona Road to John Nolan, five minutes with an average speed of around 55 miles per hour. And some other routes in and around Madison, not looking bad either. 24 minutes from the Beltline to Janesville with an average speed around 70 miles per hour. That's your first alert traffic update. We need to talk about some active weather returning to southern Wisconsin this weekend in your first alert forecast. Right, it's been very quiet. So. Yeah. Yes. See you in a few minutes, Dave. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, Dave. First at four, the city of Madison is not set up to allow everyone an equal shot being involved in democracy. That's according to a city task force that, that looked into Madison's government structures for two years. Our Amy Reed joining us now to explain who is most impacted by this. Amy? Well, this task force spent two years researching, looking <coughs> at data, and talking to people in and out of Madison. Now they have some ideas how to make sure our city government runs better. With how it's set up now, we have a part-time alder system, but the task force found this is really a full-time job. Alders who are retired or don't need the money, which is about 13000 a year, are able to devote this time and therefore get their constituents the results. Other districts aren't so lucky. This and other patterns the group found are primarily in impacting communities of color and low-income populations. The majority of decisions are made by a very small group of people at the end of the day. And that was kind of one of the things that we saw as being very alarming, that this is done in the veneer of representation or representative democracy, and it's actually doing the opposite. Some of the recommendations from the task force to address this are make the alder position full time and have four year terms, lower the number of alders to 10, redraw district lines to better account for populations. But the city council was just a piece of this. We'll explain what else the group looked at and what they think might fix it tonight at six. Big year this yep. year. We'll mm -hmm. see you at six. Thanks, Amy. The Dane County Sheriff's Office has finished its investigation into the suspected missing donation money at the Henry Vila Zoo. They found no criminal activity and all the money has been accounted for. 
Back in November, the Dane County Executive's Office raised red flags after noticing an irregularity in the amount of money reported in donations by the Zoological Society. The investigation found that the society had accounted for the cash donations differently and the amount was not previously included in financial documents sent to the zoo nor Dane County. News is now Jamie Perez spoke to the sheriff about the investigation process and how they came to discover the truth. She'll join us with more on that tonight at 5 and 6. Madison police say they're investigating a robbery on the city's west side. Officers say last night a man grabbed money out of an open cash register at the Walgreens on Raymond Road as a clerk was attempting to make change for him. That's according to a report. Employees were left shaken after the incident. The man was last seen running toward Russet Road. A bill at the state capitol would require all Wisconsin hospitals to get a patient's consent before a medical student could give them a pelvic exam while under anesthesia. Following the Me Too movement and conversations focused on consent, this is the next fight for women to control what happens to their bodies during surgeries. Our Amanda Quintana is here with more details on this. Amanda? Yes, well, right now at many Wisconsin hospitals with medical students, patients are asked if they're okay with those students being involved in their procedure. But how much those medical students will do is pretty vague. A Madison woman contacted Representative Chris Taylor saying during her surgery to remove an ovarian cyst while she was under anesthesia, she believed medical students were being taught how to do pelvic exams on her body. Representative Taylor has learned that's been a common practice for decades. The bill she authored Third would require hospitals to get a woman's explicit consent for medical students to perform pelvic exams while they're in surgery or unconscious. I think it would be extremely hard to oppose a bill that is just saying women should be entitled to what we think patients are already entitled to and we already protect this in the law. You know, we just want to extend it to medical students. If passed, Wisconsin would become the 11th state to pass a bill like this. Recently, UW Hospital created their own policy to require consent, but the practice is still happening at other teaching hospitals across the state and in the country. This is a bipartisan bill with eight Republicans supporting the bill along Representative Taylor. It's been referred to the Committee on Health, and they are waiting to see if it will get a hearing. All right, Amanda, thank you. Thank you, Amanda. A Madison institution is kicking off a land mark anniversary celebration. American Family Children's Hospital is marking its 100 year anniversary. In 1920, the first children's hospital in Madison opened its doors as part of a study on children's diseases on the UW campus. Governor Tony Evers was there today to help celebrate and announce a proclamation making 2020 the year of Wisconsin pediatric care. The transformation of East Washington will continue with a Another apartment building proposal. The State Journal reports LZ Ventures wants to demolish several buildings in the 400 block of East Washington Avenue, including houses on North Hancock and North Franklin Streets. Developers want to create a 10-story apartment building. It's unclear when construction would start. Wisconsin Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin says she will vote for President Trump's revamped North American Free Trade Agreement. In a statement, Senator Baldwin said the deal falls short, but she supports the changes that House Democrats made. Baldwin says the deal will increase market access for Wisconsin dairy farmers and cheesemakers. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he has the votes to approve the rules of the Senate impeachment trial of President Trump without negotiating an agreement with Democrats over witnesses. Pro-impeachment protesters gathered on Capitol Hill for the second day in a row as congressional Democrats ramp up pressure on the Senate GOP leaders to agree to allow witnesses and documents prior to an impeachment trial. But Senate Republicans back Majority Leader Mitch McConnell's call for an organizing resolution that copies the precedent of the Clinton impeachment trial. More than 20 years ago, the Senate took up the question of witnesses after opening statements. We have the votes uh, once the impeachment trial has begun to pass a resolution. What's good for President Clinton is good for President Trump. We'll get around to the discussion of witnesses. We say witnesses and documents, fair trial. No witnesses and do no documents, cover up. 
Former National Security Advisor John Bolton has expressed a willingness to testify if he's subpoenaed. Senate Democrats are calling for three other witnesses, including acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney. While the war of words between the U.S. and Iran already has heightened levels, the militaries of both countries are making preparations in case they are called into action. Natalie Brand has more from the White House. President Trump defended his decision to target Iranian General Qasem Soleimani, calling him a terrorist. He was a monster. And he's no longer a monster. He's dead. The president says Soleimani was preparing for more attacks on Americans. He was planning a very big attack and a very bad attack for us and other people. And we stopped him. Iran has vowed revenge for the killing, and Pentagon sources called Iranian military movements, quote, very troubling. Our top priorities remain, first, the safety and security of American personnel and our partners, and second, our readiness to conduct operations to respond to Iranian aggression. The U.S. military is moving more assets, including B-52 bombers. The United States is not seeking a war with Iran, but we are prepared to finish one. Administration officials are beginning to brief members of Congress about the president's decision to launch the strike and its repercussions. We need answers to some crucial questions, and there are many. Here are the two that are most on Americans' minds. What are Iran's most probable responses to the strike on Soleimani? And are we prepared for each of these responses? Democratic lawmakers are considering war powers resolutions to try and limit the president's ability to take military action against Iran. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. The Republican-controlled Senate is unlikely to pass any resolution limiting the president's authority, especially by a margin that could override a presidential veto. Puerto Rico's governor has declared a state of emergency in the U.S. territory following two days of powerful earthquakes. A drive through the streets of Guanica showed the devastation. The 6.4 magnitude earthquake left in Puerto Rico just before dawn. The U.S. Geological Survey says the quake hit at 4.24 a.m. just south of the island. The day before, a 5.8 magnitude quake struck nearby. Both shook the foundations of homes, pancaking cars underneath some schools are, uh, some schools are in shambles, businesses buried, and mountainsides torn apart. Monday shaking caused the collapse of a popular coastal rock formation. Government officials say power plants cut power to the entire island as a precaution Tuesday. Seismologists say it's impossible to, do, to predict when the quakes will stop or whether they'll get stronger. Well, still to come at four, it may be the first of the year, but it's time to start planning for spring break. It's Travel Tuesday today. We'll find out some of the best spring break destinations when Live at Four continues. You're watching News 3 Now, live at 4.
Jeopardy's all-time greatest contestants will go buzzer to buzzer tonight. James Holzhauer, who swept the game in a 32-day winning streak last season, will compete with Ken Jennings, the record holder for the highest winnings in regular season play, and Brad Rutter. He holds the record as the highest earning contestant of all time. That number, $4.7 million. The first to win three matches will receive $1 million and the bragging rights. The runners up will get $200. 50,000. That's very exciting. It's going to be th over three nights, right? Well, three matches. Three matches. It's an okay. hour, so they could probably have more than one match in an hour. Oh, yeah, but so just in case they have a third yeah. night, mm -hmm. just in case they need it. Well, many Americans, of course, are starting weight loss plans to start 2020. But with so many trendy diets out there, how can you know which one's actually good for you? A report done by the by U.S. News & World Report considered factors like balance, maintainability, and taste in 35 different diets. And for the third year in a row, the Mediterranean diet remains the best overall for its combination of being easy to follow and healthy. The diet focuses on eating less red meat, sugar, and saturated fat, and more simple plant-based foods. People following this diet may see the benefits of stronger bones, reduce risk for several diseases, including diabetes, and a longer life. You may be surprised that the popular keto diet came in near the bottom of the list. The keto diet restricts your carbs intake to levels that many nutritionists feel are unhealthy. Unrest in the Middle East has investors nervous on Wall Street. The Dow Industrials fell 120 points, closing at 28,582. The Nasdaq lost nearly three. The S&P 500 fell nine. Well, March is the unofficial month of spring break, which means it's right around the corner. It really is. And if you're looking for some spring break destinations and deals, our next guest has some ideas. Christopher Parr is back with us. He is the CEO of the Madison-based luxury and travel website, Pursuitist.com. Hi, Christopher. Good to see it's you Travel again. Tuesday. Travel Tuesday. Hello, Mark and Susan. Yep, Travel Tuesday is the perfect day to talk about spring break destinations. Yeah. So we, I'm going to recommend some destinations that are way from from the college kids and, and the, the parties and the pools and more alternative destinations. And these are places you can drive to. Some you can drive to. Okay. Uh, you know, first up is uh, you know San Antonio, Texas, mm -hmm. which is a little bit of a drive, but uh, I love the historic for, uh, feeling of San Antonio. Uh, it, it has rich culture, fantastic food. What I especially love about San Antonio is, is there's 15 mile long river walk. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a fantastic pedestrian path full of uh, restaurants and bars and museums. Uh, so there's two destinations, two properties. At in San Antonio that I, I just love, and I was there two, just two weeks ago. Uh, the first is is the um, is the um, Emma the Emma Hotel. Uh, it's, it was a 19th century brew pub, a brewery that they completely renovated into a brand new destination. It's a it's a 50, 150 room uh, luxury boutique hotel. Mm -hmm. It's very chic and very upscale. Uh, the other second property is is uh, the the more of a romantic and uh, classic destination is the Saint Anthony. Uh, it's, it's a remarkable de destination, a beautiful property. It was a, built in uh, 1909, and they've just, uh, had, it's like that old school charm of a, all the, like Waldorf Astoria. And uh, it's, it's one of my favorite. I was uh, completely renovated. Uh, they had a multi million dollar renovation. It's a great destination near the Riverwalk. All right. And is San Antonio relatively reasonable? Can you visit, um, you know, on a budget or without really breaking the bank? Absolutely. I mean, all along, I mean, we, in walking the, the Riverwalk, there's some really affordable uh, different properties, restaurants and bars. Yeah. And so uh, it was a, it's a nice sunny place, sit outside, have some, have a beer, have some, uh, some pulled pork or different destinations. So All right, we have 30 seconds left, unfortunately. Oh, sorry. <laughs> For a Southern Escape? So, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, one and a half minutes. We got five. Savannah, Georgia is next. Savannah, Georgia. So yes, um, I, it's similar to uh, San Antonio, fantastic historic, wonderful history. I, I love the historic district, um, walking along the cobblestone, the squares and the parks, and you know, the horse-drawn carriages. It, it's a, it's a, there's a fantastic feeling about, about Savannah. Uh, wonderful restaurants, great boutiques, and then there's the whole haunted side of Savannah too. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's two properties that I recommend uh, in Savannah. First is a brand new property called the Perry Lane Hotel. It's a, it's a brand new chic uh, boutique hotel. Uh, fantastic rooftop views, uh, very wonderful designed uh, destination. 
Uh, the second property is more of a, again, a classic old school, old Savannah uh, property called the Mansion on Forsyth Park. Mm -hmm. It's near SCAD and, and, and all, the, all those, the activity. It's, it's, a, it's a Victorian mansion, basically, as your, as your hotel property. And you could even do a day trip and do Charleston on that trip, too, because mm -hmm. it's it, close enough to do that. Correct, yeah. Uh, drive along the coast, get to Hilton Head, yeah. uh, many different wonderful des destinations. Let's head to Florida quickly. So Florida, uh, you know, there's, there's some fantastic properties all along the Atlantic coast. Uh, one of my favorites is upper is uh, the Ritz, uh, Ritz Carlton Amelia Island. It's uh, very secluded, uh, per personal uh, uh, balconies, private beaches. But now, if you want to get more of that hubbub and that more of the activity of um, you know of Florida, drive down the coast to West Palm Beach. Um, there's, the, there's two of my favorite properties. Is the first is the Ritz Carlton. I mean, sorry, the, the Four Seasons uh, uh, Walter. Uh, 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 West Palm Beach, which has uh, fantastic restaurants, uh, boutiques, uh, spas, and award-winning spots. It's a beautiful, beautiful property. Um, the secondly, second property is the Breakers. It's an old school uh, uh, Florida destination, but it's, it's a huge mammoth property. It's a, like 140 acres, uh, has a, a half a mile of beachfront, four private pools. And uh, if, be, if, if, if golfing is, is your thing, this is the place to go. They have, uh, they have a golf academy where they have one-on-one -on -one training with a golf pro, and they have two uh, professional golf, uh, big golf courses. All right, it's time to start planning. Yeah, read more about it at thepursuitist.com. Lots of great destinations. <laughs> well, like, sure, doesn't you. make you want to go. Like, I go, let's I'm go. I'm <laughs> jealous. All right, Christopher, thank you. Great to see you. you too. There's more to come at four, including the potential for snow later this week. And tonight at five, we're going to take a closer look at some of the biggest technologies technology advancements at this year's CES show in Las Vegas. That's coming up tonight at 5.
Take a look at this. Cue the Imperial March. Darth Vader and his stormtroopers have arrived in Ezra Menke's hospital room. It's not the first time the Dark Lord has paid the boy a visit. Since he was 13 months old, Ezra has been in and out of hospitals with medical issues. Aww. This time he's in for his fourth brain surgery, but he's still excited to see his old friend, Vader. I love that. Yeah, oh, buddy. That is so yeah. great. Best of luck to that little yeah. guy. Yeah. Best of luck to us tomorrow morning. Bundle up. Yeah, for the first time in seemingly forever, it's actually going to feel like winter yeah. outside with wind chills below zero. And then a little bit of quiet weather still left in the forecast before this weekend. Could be interesting. Oh, we love it uh, when you say interesting. Yeah, because my version of interesting is not everyone else's version. <laughs> we'll talk about all the possibilities uh, that could be on the way this weekend in your first alert forecast just a few minutes. Good afternoon. I hope you had a really nice Tuesday so far. Here are three things to know. So we finally have a taste of winter on the way for tomorrow morning. Below zero wind chill is expected for Wednesday morning across southern Wisconsin. Some rain showers visit us on Thursday. I know this graphic is the three things to know. We actually have three systems on the way. The first one brings us rain. Not too much in the way of accumulations there, so not too much to concern ourselves with. But we do have active weather returning for this weekend. More on that in just a little bit. As far as uh, the flurries have gone this afternoon, really not much to speak of. A lot of this is actually not even hitting the ground uh, at this point. So don't be surprised if we see a few snowflakes over the next hour or so, but not expecting uh, any impacts on the roadways. It helps when we've had such mild weather to really diminish any uh, snowflakes getting on the roadways and 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 
causing any slippery conditions or anything like that. Not expected. Madison on the Edgewater Skycam. We have seen the clouds increase as that cold front gets closer. Today's high 37 degrees so far. Normal is 26. So once again, our temperatures above normal in Madison. That makes 20 straight days of above normal temperatures. That's December 19th through today, January 7th. Will we break this streak tomorrow? I think finally, for the first time all winter, we'll actually have below normal highs and also below normal average temperatures. And for the first time in about three weeks, when we do see temperatures in the 20s, that's after starting off in the single digits. So that would put our average temperature somewhere in the teens, and that would be below normal. So we are talking about mild temperatures coming back, though, for Thursday and for Friday into this weekend. We get a little bit closer to normal, but temperatures really won't be the main story there. It will be whatever decides to potentially fall from the sky. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Actually, right now, because we do have alert days in the forecast for Friday night into Saturday. That's our first potential winter system and Saturday uh, night into Sunday morning. So the first one, occasional snow is likely. This is the one that we have a little bit more confidence in at this point with several inches of snow possible for southern Wisconsin. Now we get a short break, then the second winter system could potentially be on the way. This is late Saturday through Sunday morning. Snow could be heavy at times. This second system has the better chance of having high impacts across southern Wisconsin. So we're paying close attention to this, but at this point we have low confidence. How low? One model is saying we get zero. Another is saying we get 18 inches of snow in Madison. Not Can't make that up if I tried, so we'll watch that very closely. Could have the potential of uh, being a big weather maker across the area. Temperatures tonight in the single digits with any snow wrapping up over the next hour or two and then skies clearing a little bit breezy overnight feeling like zero to minus 10 as we wake up tomorrow and temperatures a little bit colder and sunny to start us out but we will see clouds move in during the afternoon so starting off on a quite cold note uh, for tomorrow and temperatures in the low 20s with mostly cloudy skies developing in the afternoon on Thursday. A few rain showers will come our way, not expecting much in the way of rain accumulations, but temperatures should make it in to the mid 40s. A far cry from what we'll experience as far as wind chills tomorrow morning, anywhere from about zero to minus 10 expected. Then the active weather really ramps up as we get into the weekend and for next week as well. We definitely uh, have a lot of icons on that 10 day forecast, a lot of snow icons, so plenty of snow chances after a very dry December and start to January. Looks like the atmosphere is finally realizing, oh, you know, it typically snows in, in January and February, so I should get on that. Some wild swings. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll keep an eye on things. Yeah, yeah. we will have to play. Zero or, Zero or 18 inches. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, which do you pick? <laughs> Keep an eye on it. Yes. All right, thank, thank you. you. Well, some people are skeptical about buying a used car, fearing they may be taking on somebody else's headaches. But auto experts at Consumer Reports say there are a lot of reasons to buy used while being smart about it. Our Josh Spreider has the story. Clint Walker spent a lot of time looking at used cars before taking the plunge on this Kia Soul. Affordability and reliability was very important. I was looking through a ton of cars and it was excruciating. Jake Fisher of Consumer Reports says used cars can be a great choice, particularly late model used cars, and can save you a bundle. The real sweet spot is a three-year-old used car. You could typically get one for about half what you'd pay for a new car, and many 2016 models have all the latest advanced safety gear. The four most important advanced safety features to look for are forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, pedestrian detection, and blind spot warning. For reliability, Toyotas have consistently been standouts. If you want a little more luxury, consider a Lexus. But as Clint discovered, every used car has its own unique history. Being thorough helped him avoid surprises. Doing the homework was very beneficial. It pays off at the end. If you want a little more peace of mind, look at a certified pre-owned car. You'll pay a little more, but you get a warranty that's very similar to the one you'd find in a new car. And it's always a good idea to get an independent mechanic you trust for a bumper-to-bumper -bumper inspection. Expect to pay at least $100 for this service, but it could be money well spent if a costly problem is spotted before you buy. For News 3 Now, this is Josh Spreider. Thank you, Josh. And you can also check a vehicle's history report with services like Carfax. But no matter where you buy, Consumer Reports says to be sure you check on any open recalls at the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration site, H NHTSA.gov backsplash, backsplash, backsplash. 
slash recalls so you can have any necessary work completed. Just remember channel3000.com. That's right, we'll have a link <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, it's all there. Well, still to come in four, many people commit to a better life in the new year, but all too often those promises to yourself are broken. When we come back, Dr. Shyla Mergain joins us next to tell us how to expand our limits to get more out of those promises we make to ourselves. That's when Live at Four continues. For reliable weather day in and day out, watch First Alert Weather. Here's a live look at downtown Madison from our tower cam here at the station. A little windy, apparently. All clear for now. Well, it's the new year, a time when many people commit to making changes big and small. But as we all know, within a few weeks, 90% of the commitments that we make to ourselves are broken, unfortunately. And what gets in our way is something called the upper limit problem. UW Health distinguished psychologist Shyla Mergain is back with us to explain Happy New Happy Year, Year. Shyla. Happy New Year. Now, this is something I've never heard about before. What is the upper limit problem? It's a concept um, written about by Gay Hendricks, and he says that we all have an upper thermostat, kind of a set point of happiness um, where we only have so much wealth or, or peace or happiness. And when we are trying to achieve goals, like in the New Year with re resolutions, we start to reach that upper limit. And when we reach it, we can unconsciously start to sabotage ourselves. We can act in ways that can actually override our progress. Are we afraid to go over the limit? 
Yeah, you can think about somebody in debt who's trying to pay off a loan and all of a sudden they go into a store and, and spend a lot of money or somebody who's doing weight loss and they stand next to the buffet table and eat too much. And in a sense, that upper limit is um, kind of bringing them back down. So they say that the one problem to solve in reaching our goals is the upper limit problem. And I want to talk about a few strategies yeah. to do okay. that. Let's that. break that limit. <laughs> yeah. okay. The first is to identify some of those core beliefs that get in the way. We often can feel unworthy or undeserving or sometimes we're afraid to outshine others, that we feel disloyal to our family if we make more money than our parents, or we're finally in a relationship and our other friends are single. So the best thing we can do is to affirm our worth and our deservedness. And uh, a friend of mine gave me this card a while ago with a wonderful quote saying about perseverance, saying, believe you can do it, believe you deserve it, believe you will get it. Oh, and that. so that That's kind good. of mantra can help uh, really push you forward past some of those core beliefs that get in your way. That reminds me of a mantra my mom always says, ask, believe, receive. It's sort of the, the same thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think that the second area is just to work with some of those behaviors to keep taking action. That when we reach the upper limit, we can start to worry, we can pick fights, we can blame others, blame ourselves, or even start to get sick. And so one of the best things we can do is when we notice ourselves doing that, to take a break, get back into a place of peace, you know, start to feel good, and then just take another step, take another step, take another step. With that, we tend to up-level or bring ourselves up past that, that upper limit and can really achieve those big dreams we're wanting to go for. If you hit that upper limit, is a new one then established? <laughs> I think there is, yeah. <laughs> it's a never ending battle. Yeah, and we can inspire others. You know, I always say, if we rise, others rise like the tide. Oh yeah, those are great strategies. Mm -hmm. Before we run out of time, we wanted to ask you about about a study, a very interesting study going on at UW Health that's looking for participants to talk about chronic pain. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about that. Great, if you're somebody who struggles with chronic back pain and are interested in this, um, we can get you some information. There's a graphic with the STAMP study. So we know that people with chronic pain try a lot of medical treatments, but they often um, don't aren't as effective. And we know training the mind, and this is what this study does, comparing two ways of providing some psychotherapeutic strategies. If you have chronic back pain on opioids, you can call 608-212-6902, or there's the, the email address to, to contact, and we'd love to have particip participants. And it's free. It's a great it's opportunity. A free, yeah, free opportunity, great opportunity that can help. All right, Shiloh, well, thank you. Thank you, Shiloh. Reaching Good those upper you. limits. Yes, happy, happy new, new year. year. Well, still to come at four, Madison Magazine pays homage to <laughs> Mad Magazine. We'll find out how this came about, and we'll also talk with the daughter of the founder of Mad Magazine. She's here with Doug Moe this afternoon. That conversation, when Live at Four continues, we'll be right back.
Good afternoon. Here's your first alert traffic update on this Tuesday afternoon. Taking a live look at the Beltline and Park Street. Both sides of the Beltline are looking pretty good at this hour. Traffic is generally moving at the posted speeds. A few slowdowns on the eastbound Beltline just past uh, Park Street, but really not too bad for this time of the afternoon. No major accidents or incidents to report. A little bit of slowdown on the westbound side as well, but Again, nothing that's going to delay you more than a couple of minutes. 19 minutes right now, Eastbound University Ave to the interstate with an average speed of around 50 miles per hour and some other routes in and around Madison. South Brown, uh, southbound Sun Prairie to downtown, that's six minutes, so a little bit slow. Average speed of around 25 miles per hour. And that is your first alert traffic update. All right, Dave, thank you. A vending machine dubbed the Pizza ATM it has recently been installed in a residence hall at the University of Northern Florida in Jacksonville. The pizza base is pre-cooked, toppings are added, and then it's boxed up and placed in a refrigerated compartment. Once the customer buys a pizza, it's moved to the convection oven, and it's ready to eat in just minutes. That is brilliant right? on a college Where campus. Where was that when I was in <laughs> exactly. school? Exactly. Well, for those of us who grew up on Mad Magazine, 2019 marked the end of the iconic publication's 67-year run. Madison Magazine, which of course bears a similar name, decided to honor Mad's legacy. The cover of, this, uh, the, of the current issue is Peter Krause, our mm -hmm. Bachelorette star and fitness trainer on the front. And then when you flip it over, the back cover is a hilarious mashup of longtime Madison Magazine columnist John Roach and Alfred E. Newman. What, me worry? Yeah. Mm. Madison Magazine columnist Doug Moe is here with Wendy Bucci, the daughter of the creator of the magazine, William Gaines. Welcome to Live Happy New Year. Good to see you. You live in Verona? You're living yeah. here now. And I live in Fitchburg now. Fitchburg. Well, yes. Tell us about your dad in this magazine and the legacy it left. He was crazy. <laughs> But as a father, he was very normal, and I really didn't know he was famous at all. He was just a great dad. Were and you aware of the magazine? It was in my house, <laughs> my apartment, so I read it, but I wonder if I would have read it if it hadn't have been there. But yes, I did read it. Now, you grew up in New York New and York came City. to Wisconsin for yeah. school. Yes, for college. And like all of us, never left. Stayed, yes, found love in the Midwest. But your dad really loved Madison, he too, right? He was stationed here in the Army for a period of time at Truax Field. So he loved it. He loved the bratwurst. He loved the cheese curds. He loved Duglaris and State Street. He loved every part of it. He came every Halloween, I every understand. Every Halloween. And he handed out the magazine? He handed out hands. <laughs> I handed out candy, yes. What a great story. Yeah. So, Doug, tell us about this homage to the magazine. How did this come about? I think the editors, uh, Joel and Andrea, Karen, um, with Mad, the real Mad magazine, ending its, its monthly publication, decided this would be a good time, and we just, we uh, decided to have some fun with the whole idea of uh, Madison being the best city for this or that. You mm -hmm. know, best city to bike, or we decided it's the best city to relaunch Mad Magazine. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And uh, I did a, a thing that the a comic book like the old Mad used to do, where. Um, Neil Heinen hosts a show called Off the Record and uh, <laughs> interviews Paul Soglin, who says it's the best city to run for mayor. And then I, I, I uh, called up a lot of the history of, of comedy in Madison, kind of making the case for, for it. And there's, there's some great history with um, Kentucky Fried Theater, The Onion, Pail and Shovel Party, all that stuff. So. That must have been a fun experience for you, though, that it's a little harder to do Mad Magazine style than you think. Well, huh? the, the most fun, Susan, was writing my script which was maybe 1500 words and hoping it was funny but then getting the proof back with these amazing illustrations you know i think the artist who i haven't met his name is dan burr wendy i, I profiled wendy wendy in the magazine as well and she reached out to a mad magazine illustrator who was that richmond and that's who did this the illustration no, of john he did the caricature of me inside oh, the yeah, magazine. okay inside. okay yeah and he was mm -hmm. a mad magazine Guy. He's yeah, an artist, so. yeah, mad artist. So <laughs> this, be, this must bring back a lot of memories. Oh for you. my gosh, yes. The only thing that's missing is the fold in. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that. So you're still going to do the yearly wrap up for once a year at the end? That's what I hear, but they're probably just going to be redoing old material. There won't be a whole lot of new material now. It is the end of an era. Do you know a little end. bit about why they decided to? I don't know why I would imagine that kids don't read as much anymore. It's just not there anymore. It's a different world now. Well, Mad that, doesn't really fit into it. That you could revive it, the whole thing. Yeah. You know, this was fun. <laughs> it's fun to <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's a blast, that's for sure. It brings back a lot of memories.
Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. On sale Great now. to see you nice both. We're, 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 <laughs> we'll be right back with the final. Oh, you can read more about this and check out the best of Madison area by reading the latest edition of Madison Magazine. And we'll be right back with the final check of your forecast. Bundle up tomorrow morning. Yeah, the flurries are coming to an end tonight, but that cold front that's coming through and sparking those flurries is going to do a number on our temperatures and wind chills tomorrow morning. So not much left in the way of flurry activity. I think those skies will clear tonight. Temperatures will fall quickly through the 30s and 20s this evening. This is what it could feel like uh, tomorrow morning around 6 a.m. So wind chills of about 0 to minus 10 possible across southern Wisconsin. And then it actually feels like winter for a day with highs in the low 20s and mostly cloudy skies by tomorrow afternoon. Mild temperatures do come back by the time we get to Thursday and our first of three systems gets here. First one, not much to worry about, a couple of rain showers. Second one gets here late Friday into Saturday. That uh, we have more confidence in. The snow totals won't be anything crazy, it looks like at this point. The third system could have major impacts on the area. We'll have to fine tune those details because a lot of uncertainty there. All right. Keep, keep. Keep informed. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Tomorrow here on Live 4, Lisa Briggs from the Roost Company is taking your plant questions live. And we're going in the kitchen of the Octopi Restaurant with Madison Magazine. That's coming up tomorrow on Live at 4. And that looks good.